Hello and welcome back to my series where I try to implement a Pong clone in the Bevy game engine. Um, sorry for taking so long. Um, I did record another part 5 where I was implementing Collision, but uh, since I recorded it like at 2 a.m., um, I wasn't really good. I, I made a lot of mistakes and wasn't coherent in what I was saying, so I deleted it and after that started procrastinating um, recording the f uh, fifth part of the series. So here I am and in the meantime um, Bevy got an update to the 0 0.3 series. So, uh, no, not series, version. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, update the bevy version we're using. So let's go to our code and um, first let's do a cargo update. Let's see if it still compiles and runs. This is just updating uh, all the other dependencies for now. It's not already updating uh, Bevy. I just noticed um, we're actually two versions behind right now. So this might be more interesting than I thought actually. So from what I was reading in the blog post, so let's see, we can move around our pedal. That's what we were doing. We have a movement system, the ball is moving, but we don't have any collisions yet. That's the state um, the game was in last time. But let's first commit our um, cargo update. And after that, let's try to change the Bevy version to version 0 0.3. And I don't think it's going to compile, but we'll see. Let's take another look. Still compiling. So, fail to resolve use of undeclared type rotation. So, let's take a look at all the changes that happened. Android support, iOS support, Web assembly asset loading, touch input, asset system improvements. Yeah, most of that is not quite relevant for us right now. Sub asset loading, asset IO trade, GRTF, ECS improvements, proof query ergonomics. Yeah, I think we can now use an actual iterator for the queries and not this strange thing which we had to mutably borrow. Performance improvements, uh, remove of all locks. The question is what happened in terms of, oh, transform rewrite, that's probably what we're looking for. In the last release, we vastly simplified Bevy's transform system to use a consolidated transform and global transform instead of multiple separate translation, rotation, and scale components. So this looks like we can just um, take a look at what a transform looks like. Um, let's still keep the examples open for now docs.rs slash bevy 
transform. If I could type correctly, this would be much better. With a transform module, with a transform struct, which contains a translation, rotation, and scale. And we have transform components. And I think in the past, this the components were actually called components like this would be called transform components but right now it seems like it's been moved to a components module and renamed like that let's take a look for components so It's kind of bad that the compiler doesn't really want to uh, show any, or the IDE doesn't really want to show any syntax highlighting right now. Let's take a look at the commands. Are the, the commands still there? Yes, seems like it. And it's used. Oh, it's probably part of the prelude. Uh, the app is also still there. Create an app, app builder and add systems one by one. Oh no! Now it got the uh, syntax highlighting. Okay, let's take a look at the compiler error message again. What is it doing? So. There are no sprites anymore, at least not where we were expecting it to be. Let's search for sprites. Bevy prelude sprite. There are still sprites. They have a size and a resize mode. So this probably can be filled in with a sprite default I guess no we don't need that comma here what is a resize mode we have manual and automatic not sure what that means maybe it has something to do with display resolution I'm not quite sure so the sprite components are not called sprite components anymore I guess there should be something like components sprite no oh actually they still are here we don't have a rotation anymore we have a transform instead and a transform has a rotation so essentially what we're doing is we're saying we're creating a transform that transform then has a rotation which is just a quad quaternion from how do we construct this from rotation Z so quad from rotation Z standard F32 const pi divided by 4.0 and we fill it up with default default should have done the same thing here that so what is it still complaining about 
expected transform found range transform let's take a look at the sprite components again No, it's just a regular transform. Where's the range part? Oh, here it is, I guess. Looks like we got that figured out. Now the same thing for the paddles. We don't have a we still have a sprite but it doesn't have a translation it has a transform which has a trans which is a transform with a translation which is a reg 3 which is just player dot start position dot extend zero dot zero is it this is a vec three exactly fill it up with default and we've got that completed probably actually what what is this global trans global transform about maybe the global transform hmm Let's take a look at the examples. Um, 2D examples. Sprite. Trans no, no transform here. It it kind of looks uh, to me like the there are more transforms right there. Trans, uh, no, more examples. I mean, parent child relative transforms. Not quite sure. Custom loop defaults headless. Input scene shaders tools. Not quite sure. Well, for now, let's just ignore the global transform option. Or maybe we, we uh, should take a look at the um, blog post for Bevy 0 0.2 because it seems like we skipped two versions and maybe there's something interesting in the 0 0.2 version. And also let's take a look at uh, global transform in here. Maybe there's something about that. In the last release, we vastly simplified Bevy's transform system to use a consolidated transform and global transform instead of multiple separate translation, rotation, and scale components. Okay, let's go to the new section and look at Bevy 0 0.2. An async task system. Web platform support, parallel queries. Oh, nice. That's nice. Transform system rewrite. That looks like it. Bevy's old transform system used separate translation, rotation, and scale components as the source of truth. Users modified with these component. Users modified these components in their systems, after which they were synced to a local transform component, which was in turn synced to a global transform component taking hierarchy into account. This was nice for a couple of reasons. Slightly more cache efficient to retrieve, in, it retrieve individual components like translation because less data needs to be accessed. Theoretically more parallel friendly systems that only access translation won't block access, uh, systems accessing rotation. However, this approach has 
also has some pretty serious downsides. The individual components are the source of truth, so local transform is out of date when the user systems are running. If an up-to-date full transform is needed, it must be manually constructed by accessing all three components. Very hard to reason about, there are five components users need to think about and they all interact with each other differently. Setting a transform to a specific matrix uh, value, for example, uh, matrix for look at was extremely cumbersome and the value would be immediately overwritten unless the, the user explicitly disabled component syncing. Given these issues, we decided to move to a single unified local to parent transform component as the source of truth and a computed global transform component for a word space for, for word space transforms. We think this API will be much easier to use and to reason about. Unity is also considering a similar transform rework to, to the, for their ECS and a lot of it, the discussion on this topic happened in this Amethyst forum thread. I'm not quite sure this really applies to what we're doing right now. It might be incorrect to just use regular transforms uh, for what I'm doing, but I don't care at the moment. So let's continue here. We, it doesn't compile because of the comma probably, let's compile again, cannot find type translation, what is happening here, unnecessary parentheses, some fields are missing, that shouldn't be a problem. Now it doesn't find the translation because there is no translation anymore. It's a transform. And this is a transform. Transform dot translation dot zero should be the correct thing, shouldn't it? Maybe it's not mutable anymore. I mean, yeah, I'm taking uh, I'm t uh, taking the translation, and by that that point, it's not mutable anymore let's let's take a look well let's first fix uh, the other instances so um, we have a transform not a transform plugin and this is a transform and this is transform dot translation Like that, like that. Mm. At default plugins, there's no at default plugins anymore. Let's take a look at the app builder. Um, empty resources, resources mute, run set world at stage. Add system, init system, add startup system, hmm, add default stages. Let's take at the source code if it's actually doing what I think it's doing. Pre startup, startup, post startup. Oh, I don't think that's what we're trying to use here. Let's take at the blog post again. Uh, take a look at the blog post again. There was something about um, default systems plugins. What was the name? Plugins. 
you've used Bevy, you're probably familiar with this part of app initialization. This adds the plugins for the core engine functionality, rendering input, audio windowing, etc. It was straightforward, but also very static. And what if you don't want to add all of them, on, uh, so on and so forth? Plugin groups. Add plugins, default plugins. That's it. That looks li more like it. The sprite has some problem. Missing resize mode. Mode. Exactly. Like that. No, like that. Oh, okay. Now we're seeing the problem with the query. So we have a query. Let's see. Query.iter is now a real iterator. Can we still modify it? Is uh, the question. In this release, I finally was able to remove the only thing I truly despised. It writing over the components in a query looked like this, or like this. Similarly, retrieving. So, what does it look like now? Like this. But is it mutable? Maybe we have to change the query to actually take a mutable reference. It already does, so this should work actually. Let's see. Query.iter should be all right. Seems like it's not. Or is it? The trade read only fetch is not implement for um, implemented for bevy hecs query fetch mute bevy bevy prelude transform. And this one is private. Oh. Transform dot translation dot get no x x equals this. And transform dot translation dot set x new value I mean that should at least fix that part. Should it? What was it looking like before? That's strange. Let's undo that for now. Let's first concentrate on the uh, actual iterator. Um, we can just take a look at the examples and find the movement systems.
do we still have the um, what was the name an audio example parallel query sort of system breakout let's take a look at the breakout example again movement system they have a mutable transform and what they are doing oh translation.x so they they just made it more ergonomic essentially but how are they iterating iter mute i mean i i could have come to that solution by myself if I were actually able to understand Rust. <laughs> kind of embarrassing. Um, no, this is not a translation. This is a transform. And we have transform.translation.x do we? Where's the translation coming from? Oh, right. We still need to borrow the translation because um, if we just write transform dot translation, what is it saying? Oh. Maybe we don't. We don't want to take the value, we just want to set it. Oh, this is a method. Does this even compile? We have a tr mutable reference to transform, like here. For pedal, pedal and mutable transform, like this. Let's just do it like they are doing it. Let translation equals mutable borrow of transform dot translation. And now translation dot x plus equals this doesn't seem right does it method not a field so let's take another look at the translation which is a vec3 so just transform translation vec3 which is a pub struct but with non-public members so Oh, X mute. Maybe like this. Nope. And we need to dereference it. Now, what's the matter? Yeah, right. This is transforming the entire thing, not just the X component. So actually, this is what I'm looking for. Because um, all the time I thought the dot zero meant the X coordinate, but actually what I'm doing here is I'm applying all the, um, all the three coordinates like we have a three dimensional velocity uh, and we apply it to a three dimensional translation and the old version just was doubly wrapped. Um, so the dot zero was just taking out the inner part, which means in this case, we just need to do transform the translation, dereference it and we can assign to it or not. Seriously. Oh, 
just do it like this. Same thing here, just remove that and it should just work. And like that, we've got it compiling again. And it still seems to work, which is nice. So now we can actually start implementing Collision. And judging from how bad I am at doing math maths in my head, and wrapping my head around um, collisions, for, um, as, wit as not witnessed by you, but by myself in... Um, trying to record the fifth uh, fifth part of the video or like the the fifth video um i'm probably gonna heavily rely on the breakout example to implement my collision system so let's first make a commit which is now called update to bevy 0 0.3 and start looking at collision again. Collision. AABB collision. So the breakout example. The ball collision system. Do we have another collision system? No, there's only one collision system. It takes a scoreboard resource, a ball query, and a collider query. I mean, we probably do not yet have a collider. Nope, but we can take a look at what a collider actually is. Or maybe not. We have a collision. We have a collide function. Maybe the collider is just something they invented in the breakout example. Let's take a look at the collider. Okay, so the collider is just another component that describes how a collision is behaving. Solid, scorable, or paddle. What's, what's different about a paddle? Maybe it has a direction. So in any case, the... The paddle has a paddle collider component. The... Um, what's that? The walls have a solid collider component. And the bricks have a scorable collider component. Let's just rip that off and make our own collider component, which in this case is, at some point I need to clean this up, I guess. Um, player ball. enum collider and this is either a paddle or it is a wall like this and now when spawning a paddle we add a new component which is a collider component Collider paddle, like this. 
should still compile. Although, yeah, maybe we'll just remove the wall for now because we don't have any walls yet. But we can add the, the walls later or um, as, as soon as the collider has been added. So, the collisions with paddles have been implemented. That's what I was trying to say. So we have a query for the ball and a query for the collider, which has an entity. What's an entity again? It's just a regular entity with with an ID, I guess. Entity, entity. Entity. Yeah, it's just um, just what has the ID of uh, an entity in the in the entity component system. It's been a while since the last video, so I don't remember everything. Let's go back to the example. So let's just make our collision system for now. Ball collision system. I think at some point we also need to limit where the paddles can move, but that's... Let, let's just um, concentrate on the collisions for now. We want... Oh, commands. They're accessing the commands. Maybe they are spawning new commands. Okay. In case of scorable, they despawn collider entities. That's what they are using the commands for, so we do not need that at least for now, because we don't have any bricks that need to despawn. What we do need is a ball query. Why is it mutable? Yeah, because we need to... Um, what do we need? Why, why does the ball need to be mutable? Well, let's see. So, the Ball query is a mutable, and I, I don't know how to write Rust anymore again. Is a query of a ball, and it's col. Oh, we want its sprite to know its dimensions. And it's transform to know its location probably. So so a transform and the sprite of the ball. And no idea why the ball needs to be mutable. But we'll find out I guess. Then we want a collider query. Which is a query that queries the collider. And um, probably we didn't want the yeah, also the transform and the sprite, because we want to know where it is. And also... Where it's... How, what its dimensions are. I don't think we need the entity for now, but we'll see, I guess. So... Let's iterate over the balls. I guess there's only one ball, but hey, maybe we can just get the ball more easily. Yeah, whatever. Let's iterate over all balls. For 
ball ball trans form and the ball sprite in ball query dot iter. Let's do it non mutably for now and if we need it to be mutable we'll just we're just gonna make it mutable. The collision is we collide ball transform translation, ball size, transform translation and sprite size. Sprite is the ball sprite. No, it, it's not. Ball size is the sprite size and velocity is the ball velocity. Let's just ignore that for now. And what we're doing is iterating over all the collisions. So in there for collider transform um, collider transform and sprite collider sprite we are going to in the collider query dot iter we are now going to collide or try a collision is uh, collide and that's where I need to take a look at the collide function collide a a b b collide Axis aligned bounding box collision with side detection. I'm not sure what axis aligned means in this case, but we have the position of A, the size of A, the position of B, and the size of B. In this case, what they are doing is the ball is A and B is the wall. So we want the ball dot trans the ball transform dot translation. Oh great, it's taking the entire translation which makes it much much easier and we want the ball sprite dot size which is nice and now the collider transform dot translation not rotation translation and the collider sprite that size and like that we get a collision now the collision what are they doing reflect the ball when it collides only reflect if the ball's velocity is going in the opposite direction of the collision so what happens if we collide A and B? Returns a an, a, an optional collision. So what collides? Like if it's a left collision, is the ball left of the paddle? I'm not quite sure. But I think we're gonna find out because we're gonna, going to take a look right here. So let's say we have a left collision and the velocity is the velocity of the ball. The velocity is in the x direction so we're coming from the left and going to the right, the x axis. And that velocity is greater than zero that means that we are actually running into the wall or whatever from the left 
so we want to reflect. If we're coming from the right, we want the velocity to be the exact opposite and the same for the top and the bottom, which means the first thing is what is crashing into something and the collision that's coming out describes on what side it is colliding into, if that makes sense. So this collide function returning left means the ball is colliding into, into the left side of the wall or paddle, which makes sense. So for now, um, match the collision. At the remaining patterns. In the none case, we just want to return, I guess, or just do nothing. No collisions. Uh, actually, we want to continue, not return. And in the sum case, it matters which kind of collision we have. So maybe we're just gonna do an if let sum collision equals collision. Since these are not variables, but just value bindings, I have no problem with act actually giving this the same name as this. And in the other case, we're just not doing anything. Um, in this case, let's keep it flat. Well, maybe match is just easier. Let collision equals match collision. that we have some collision and in this case we just return it and none which means we just continue the loop this looks nicer maybe not quite sure match collision F a left, right, top and bottom collision. What's the matter here? Match must be exhaustive. Is it not? How is it not? This is an option. Yeah, maybe it's just my IDE just not getting it correctly. So uh, we now want to determine if we need to reflect right or left. And this is what is happening here. And I don't really like the reflect property being modified immutably in place. So I'm just going to do this in one single um, match. Let's make make this like this. Let reflect x comma reflect y equals this match. Let's put a bunch of unimplemented here so we don't get an immediately um, Im immediate compiler error. So in the case of left, if the ball is coming from the le left going right 
and it hits the left of the paddle, we want it to be reflected in the x direction, which means the ball's velocity dot uh, x component, if it is larger than zero, then reflect and uh, uh, in, in the x direction, but do not reflect in the y direction. Like that. And in the case of right, we want the exact opposite. If it's smaller than zero, reflect in the uh, reflect the y velocity, otherwise false. Same thing here for the top. If it's, we don't care about the x um, velocity in this case, but if the ball is going down, so the y uh, velocity is negative, so smaller than zero, we want to reflect, and this in this case it's the ball is coming from down to to up, right? It's it's like shooting into the the sky, meaning we want a to check for a positive y velocity. Is there an is positive? Oh, nice. It's it's the wrong way around right now, but that's nice is positive that's much nicer or is it uh, input signed let's take a look at the standard library search for is positive It's not stable yet. Great. I really do not like it not being stable yet because I I would really like this method to be there. But hey, can't do anything about that. Maybe with the sign. Signum. Oh, yeah, not really. And in case, so if reflect dot x, we want to change the ball's velocity, which is why we need this to be mutable. I now get it. We have a mutable no, it doesn't need to be mutable. Just iter mute. Like this. So we reflect in the y direction. No, in the x, if, if reflect x, we ah. actually this can be done much neater as well. So, or can it? Essentially, what we what we what we want is a two-dimensional vector. But for for now, let's just implement it as is. Check that it works, and then make it nicer. Reflect x the ball dot velocity dot wait the velocity is a Vec2, I guess. Exactly. It's not a number, sign, signum. 
Recip Lerp. Near interpolation, interesting. Is normalized, new zero one unit x unit y splat extend x y oh yeah that's what I was looking for x mute and y mute so maybe there's also a method to just flip it around floor seal angle between there's no flip or something like that So let's just use the X mute, the reference it, uh, it and how are they doing it? Yeah, they just ma make sense. <laughs> but how are they actually? using the velocity like this. Did I specify it manually? Oh, it's a VEC3 in their case. How? Maybe I'm stupid. Or maybe the VEC3 is different. It's not. X. How, how can they actually just access X like that? I don't understand. Whatever. Velocity dot X negative of that. And this is not declared as mutable. And if reflect y, the ball's velocity y component is flipped. And the collider, let's modify that. I mean, in our case, we don't actually need it to be an enum anyway, so Collider is just an empty struct, which also means Collider Paddle is just a collider like this. Let's see if it compiles. And the ball collision system is not registered. Let's do that. And add system ball collision system dot system is it not called like that what is it called oh yeah right We don't actually care about the collider. We just want to know that it is one. Let's maybe call it collider like this. So we know what it is. Let's take a look and see if the ball bounces. Nice. Well, actually, did that bounce correctly? Didn't. Did it bounce at, at the right edge? Huh. No, it seems like it bounced correctly. It just didn't properly take into account the rotation, I guess. 
uh, maybe we, ju we should just remove the rotation from from the ball. Um, no transform for our ball anymore. And then it should look much better, I guess. Now it bounces immediately. That's nice. Otherwise, I, I think if I actually want to collide it with the translation, uh, with the rotated ball, I need to um, make the bounding box around the ball bigger and don't use the, the actual ball sprite for it. For now, let's just commit this. There are one changes. Uh, one is just removing the rotation from the ball, which is this change. Remove rotation from ball. And the other change is actually implementing the ball collision system. And now let's take a look at how this could actually be improved up on. I mean, this is just like a multiplication. So what we could do instead is like this is um, a 1.0, so no, nothing flipping. This is also a 1.0. This is a 1.0. No, that doesn't make it better. But what we could do instead is maybe map this. Is there a map defined on a... Why is there no map on tuples in, in the Rust programming language? That's bad. Huh. Well. Yeah, maybe because it doesn't really make sense. So the um So we have our reflect x and reflect y, but we want um a vector 3 that does our actual that that we can just multiply scalarly with the velocity i mean oh no two dimensional yeah so the reflection let's call it reflection um what's the name of what you multiply something with multiplier whatever we can rename it afterwards is a vec2 is this actually allowed nope vec2 new from reflect x Does that make any sense? No. If reflect x one dot minus one dot zero else reflect uh, else one dot zero that's not really making it any better, I guess. <laughs> I 
I thought maybe there's a way to make this simpler. But maybe I was kind of wrong about that. I mean, this should probably work like that. So now we can use the false velocity and scale. Is this even possible? An element wise multiplication of a VEC2? dot dot product maybe just the regular multiplication um, implements multiply for vec2 oh no that's not where what I was looking for mal vec2 for vec2 which yeah exactly which just does what we want so times equals reflection multiplier is this much better I don't know it should work the same still reflects in this direction. And still reflects like that. But I don't know, doesn't seem much better. I mean, we could make a helper function that contains just that part. Like fn sine const fn sign from bool or something like that which I, I mean I could make it generic but that's well why not let's just do that it's it's all for fun anyway so number type no, we cannot write code generically over several number types because num traits is not part of the standard library. So let's stop doing that and just use F32. Sign from bool, which takes a boolean And if boolean then one dot zero else minus one dot zero like this. And now we have sign from bool not reflect x. And sign from bool not reflect y or maybe not I mean it does work but it it's not making it much better. Arguably, maybe even worse. So let's go back to what it was before with separate um, if reflect x and if, if reflect y. I mean, if reflect x or reflect y weren't used later on, it, it would complain that uh, reflect x is not used so it's not that easy to make that mistake of not using it so whatever 
but I think that's enough for the uh, for this video. Um, in the next one, uh, if it's not that far in the future that we need to upgrade to a new bevy version again, I'm probably going to add the walls around the playing field uh, and maybe add the the score component where we count if we hit the wall. So goodbye and hopefully see you in the next video.